Hello, 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 hello. And without further ado, some background tunes. Today, 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 what we're going to do today, more database diagramming, a little more metal, like always, uh, some CLI stuff, we're going to definitely do that today. All right, so rid of my big face upon the screen and here we go where where what do i want here oh that's clean to hell on the other side of the universe mm -hmm. don't want to do this i don't think i want to do this i'm gonna do okay i'm gonna open my repo here in a second as soon as I kind of remember what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah, so I made it kind of a webby interface. Oh, that fucking hurt. Note to self, don't pull off part of your lip right as you stream. You might spaz out. Let's see, here's my... My main repo I've been using, it has some migrations. Let's see, what do I have in here? I have oh schema. Oh, and I wanted to do some experiments here to see how things work. So we're gonna actually we're gonna do this all over again on stream here. Um so I removed the migrations directory there and let's see what is running. nothing locally so let's do dev uh, start oh what oh, okay that restarting the instance concerned me there for a second Seems to have worked itself out though. Pet peeve, boom, boom, okay. Why does this keep? I don't like that the bar is sticking up right now. It shouldn't be doing that. Where's the dock? Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, now we get the whole stupid screen. That's what we wanted. Okay, get rid of all that stuff. Oh, and then... We're on the working branch. Yeah, so get push. Working. Working. Now in this repo, let's let's uh let's bring this up just because yeah. Okay, so this this is the repo that we were just looking at, but I pulled it up in the terminal. I wanted to use the terminal. A little more a little more visible. Boom. All right, and then, okay, not to read me. Uh, oh, okay, I just did those two things. Sort of CLI. So yeah, I got both this, all this stuff installed. And then, all 
Let's do this. Let's do Hasura. Migrate. Create. Um, first. No, wait. Logistics. Logistics. Inception. Um, so I'm going to do from server. I think that will allow me to do it against the local server. Yeah, there we go. So checks for updates. Oh, I need to do Hasura. All right, so Hasura. Um, do I do migrate in it? Maybe. I always forget the order of this stuff. No, Hasura, oops, Hasura, um, and it. To, I never remember what I have to do first. Oh, whoops, Hasura. Oh, that's cool, it does that command, okay. Um. Uh, okay, so to start, we need to run Hasura init um, logistics. Oops, logistics database, and then endpoint. Oh, actually, I'm not going to do the endpoint because that should be in the configuration, I believe. And then, oh, it makes that directory. I don't want to do that. I want to do Hasura init migrations. Yeah, so now I got migrations, and then I'm going to get rid of the logistics database. So now I go in here, and that should have everything that we need to look at. So here's our config YAML, localhost 3000. That, I believe, is what we want. Localhost 8080, that should be good. So then when we create migrations via the console, I should just crop up right in there. So first steps, let's hear Hasura, migrate, create, init, logistics, inception, all right. So, there we go. So then, let's do Hasura. 
And then secret help and secure endpoint string and my file line skip. Sura migrate help. No, Sura migrate. Oh. Oh, that's what I want. Hasura migrate status. Hey, Bible Clan member, how are you today? Version name, source status, database status. Okay, Hasura. So I created one. So then I should be able to do Hasura console. Um. Cool with popcorn. Should I should I use the console or should I just go straight to? Making migrations, writing the SQL. You get to you get to help me vote on that. Cause I could use the console. Or I could use or I could just go straight manual right off the beginning. Well, let's do a console one real quick. So run a console. Oops, come on. And it came up way yonder over here. Since installation of Hasura, I have installed the CLI. I'm literally starting from scratch at this point. So in, in oh, in here, I ran the, well, that doesn't do any good. I scroll up. I ran the initialization, which is this. But then I deleted that directory because the initialization makes a directory. I did Hasura init migrations. Okay. So then I navigated into that. So you can remove the old one. So now I have a migrations directory. And from there, I ran uh, Hasura migrate status just because I wanted to see if it showed anything because I did run Hasura migrate create uh, logistics inception. So it created the initial first uh, step, but it doesn't have anything in it. Like I didn't make it do anything. So now I ran Hasura console, which what it does is it brings up the interface. And then whatever I do in the interface, which why does the, oh, you have to bring up the interface here. Now, if I go to data and let's say, okay, I don't have any particular schemas that I want to use and I want to create one. So I'm going to create a schema. We'll call it logistics. We'll create that. So that's created. So now we're working in the schema, the Postgres schema logistics. I'm going to create a directory. We'll call it to start with uh, trains ID UID uh, gen. Oops, random UID unique, and then uh, name text. Um, and it needs to be unique too. And we're going to make our primary key the ID. And that should be good for initial table. So that'll give us something to look at. So if I go back over here, no, actually, let's go here. I'm going to close the console. And what does that do? Okay, it's still not doing anything. So I'm going to kill this. But it should have written the migration. Yeah, so we got, oh yeah, create table, create schema, create table, logistics inception. So if we do a status, uh, whoops. We'll see, we got the config updated. The metadata stuff is updated, even though there's not really any metadata added at the moment, or no metadata in the sense of uh, strings or whatever or not strings, trigger, triggers or whatever, or functions. Nothing new is really added. But I did add just now, as you saw, the logistics schema and the logistics table. So that's there. Get status, get push origin. Oh, shoot, what's my a working? Get push origin working. So I'm gonna exit out of that. And then, oh yeah, this is here. 
Don't want to look in there though. I want to look in here. So here's here's that stuff. Migrations. So we have an up and down for the nothing. Oh, that's the one that I created, but it's doesn't really do anything. So this should have the table, which it does, with the pertinent pieces, and then drop the table. This should have the schema and drop for the schema. Okay. So now the next manual step would be uh, let's see here. So I'm going to kind of work from here, and we'll see how that, that goes. But right now, I want to just do some of the commands. Hasura migrate apply. Oh, whoops, I need to be in the migrations directory. I got nothing to apply because, well, you know, it's already applied. So then the commands here are apply squash status. Um, what is it? If you go backwards, well, for Hasura, migrate. Um, Oh shoot, I forget what it is. If you want to go backwards. Oh, it's down, down. Oh, let's try Sura migrate down, just that. Unknown flag down doesn't work. Oh, I need a, a Sura, because it's all an application or applying the changes. So you got to do apply and then down, down. Oh, you have to state the difference? Oh yeah, there we go. So then if I do Hasura migrate apply, migrates are applied, migrations are applied. So back and forth, back and forth there. Now, again, so, okay. So I just did this down, I guess you can type all, you go all the way back. So you go to specific version, and then let's say migration file format. Up and down, okay. Ah, tricky. So really you wanna kinda of do this with the console and then add other pieces outside of the console. I think metadata YAML. Yeah, okay. See, there's V2 stuff out, and I'm not really sure. I need to find out what the difference is there. So let's bounce out of that. We're going to pop that back open. So logistics is still there. But migrations, what? Uh, what is used to? Yeah, so I want. Whoops! I want to go back to logistics. Then trains, and then let's modify this. And basically, for reference. I am building out this. Whoops. So this is for some data that I'm going to be getting. This this one um, from an import. <clears throat> this is data I'm going to be creating myself from collecting the data out on the web. So, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is basically what I'm going to be building right now. All right. So let's get trains up to spec of what it needs to look like. So add a column, I've got name, I want historical start, which is gonna be a date time. Oh, let's we'll go with date, nullable, yep. Save that puppy. And then we're gonna have historical end, 
for whatever it either went out of business or stopped working for whatever specific reason. Then we're going to have description. It's going to be text. And yes, I'm just making these nullable for the moment. And then notes, also text. All right, so I think that is it for that table. So then let's go back to the schema logistics here, create another table. This one is going to be called the consist for the uh, parts of the vehicle within the train itself, such as the engine and the rail cars. And this is going to have, let's see here, ID, UID, gen, random, UID, unique, and train ID, UID. Um, Okay, and then it's gonna work like this. So I'm gonna have that as the primary key and then as a foreign key, uh, this is gonna go back to trains and train ID is gonna reference the ID of the train table. Um, and then we're gonna add details. Oops, let's do that. There we go. Another table. Let's go with, hmm. I will need railroads for the overarching companies. City. This will be the city of where the headquarters of where the railroad is at. I'm going to actually make it nullable because we might not be able to find it right off. The service area would be the geographic area like North America or if it's a specific state in the United States like Mississippi or say Germany, but it serves, I don't know, uh, Frankfurt Airport or something like that. So we can kind of narrow it down a little bit. The map link is just going to be a URI that's going to point at where a map of the system is. So let's add ID. Oh, you haven't got anything in prod yet, huh? So check this out. I'm going to, I'm going to bounce around here just for a second and then show you something. Because, yeah, it, it is, it's, it's super badass. There's, there's a lot of awesome parts to it. Like right now I'm just creating migrations with a user interface. That alone is pretty awesome in my, in my not humble opinion. Um, but let's, let's bounce over here to GitHub. And this, the thing that I'm actually building this in, you can go out and, and grab the, either the Docker or the Terraform that I have to run this. The Terraform actually will deploy the whole thing out into Azure with the way I have it set up. So in this repo, Adrian's ecosystem, which should be public. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, oh, thanks, Smith for Pibbits. You're awesome too, Smith for Pibbits. So you twiddle with the web UI, then run as her migrate. Right, Viable Clan member. That's one thing you could do, or you can manu manually create it too. So you can write the SQL. Uh, but here, let's just let's just talk. Terraform for just a second. Here's the Terraform. One file, it breaks down, and I have a blog entry out there on this too. So the actual Postgres database server, which runs in Azure's Postgres service, then the database is created inside of that, then a firewall to open up the Postgres to the Hasura server, and then Hasura runs in a container within Azure Container Services, right? Um, and if you snag this, you can pretty much run it almost as is. There's not a lot to change. Um, and at the end, it'll 
spit out the URI for you right there. And that'll give you a running in Azure Hasura instance containerized running against an actual Postgres database, which is kind of badass because the Postgres database totally managed there. You can do seven day backup. I think I have some of those settings up here. Like seven day backup, you can do multi regional, et cetera. Up in here, yeah, here it is. see redundant backup. I've turned it off just because I don't want to pay for it. Retention, seven days, good stuff, real good stuff. It takes about two minutes, I think, for this to spin up because it takes a little bit to get the database up and running. And I think that's like 50 bucks a month. But if you just want to try it out, especially locally, I got a Docker YAML here, which is kind of specific to my setup here in the sense that I have a Postgres password that I pull an environment variable from. So, which, you know, just keeps the passwords out of the repo. But uh, I set it specifically to port 8080 and it gets up and running, launches a Postgres database and the GraphQL engine right here. This points it at the database and boom, you're up and running. Like that, that's simple, right? And you can do everything that I'm doing right now. By the way, how are you, Smiffer Pibbits? How is, how is the the other side of the north. What is it working? Oh yeah, that's what I pushed earlier. So, as Smith for Pivots thinks about how he's doing, just to mention, here's this, this one, I'll put it in the chat so it's easier to click on. Uh, that, that covers everything that I just talked about the exact prerequisites you need, the CLI, Docker, blah, blah, blah. And then it talks about the Terraform and it talks about all the specific little detailed bits and it talks about the Docker Compose. So production and dev environments there to get up and running. And honestly, it doesn't take, like the Docker Compose is crazy fast. It takes like two seconds for it to run. Been without power since, wait, what happened? What happened with power? Was there a fire? That kind of that kind of sucks. I have I have power. I would loan you my power if I could get it over to that part of the country. But so far the the hydropower is all stuck in the river basically. All right, so I don't like my casing here. I'm perturbed about that. I wonder if I can change the table name this way. Ain't I just picky? Whatever. It can it can stay that casing. Oh, a storm. Yeah, you definitely get those over there. Mm -hmm. So railroad, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to put an operator table in because a railroad would be the operator of a train. Train may be operated by multiple railroads. It's a tricky bit. So I have a mini to mini table here. Um, let's do this operator. Do I want to do that or just, I don't really know how I want to case my tables. Saturday night or Sunday. Oh my God, it's not even Saturday. It's Friday still. You got another whole like 20, 70,000. What kind of shit is that? That's that's super not cool. Um, I'd be pretty pissed for that many days. I mean, even in Hurricane Katrina, the eye rolled over Southern Mississippi and it only took them six months to get consistent power back on 08. Yeah, we were pretty pissed about that. That's why the parents moved... And yep, we were done with that area of the country. But we do kind of okay here in the Northwest, but we also do other dumb things like misplace our water uh, or dump sewage in it. We do that sometimes too. You can't go swimming then. That's dumb. But uh, yeah, not to get sidetracked because that happens. What am I? Hold on. Okay. Sidestep here. What is this? Can't, this is like a pseudo opera thing or something. I can't really listen to that right now. I want some simpleton metal to listen to. We need to have some rave the requiem. What? This is, this is a cute song. So I see stuff like this in this day and age. Okay, I'm just going to talk for a second because I feel like it. So this, this one right here that I'm going to click on. See, Ginger, it's live, right? Nobody in the United States is doing live shows unless they're a complete asshole, right? 
Meanwhile, Europe's having live shows all over the place again. I think they're having live shows in Canada. Asia's having live shows. Asians, Asia is going to movies again. We ain't got no damn movie theaters open. Our movie theaters are running out of biz- going out of business because America's a bunch of jackasses. They can't s- chill out. Mm, pisses me off. Anyway, generally incompetence is just like a bummer. Like you mourn it, you know, but now it's like our stuff's completely foobarred. I don't even know how much more stuff's going to get messed up. But anyway, I digress. Ginger, live show. Might have been recorded, you know, before now. But I know they're on tour, just like a bunch of other bands are actually on tour in Europe, going around different different places, off in Brandenburg and Germany, you know, and Frankfurt. And ah, I'm so pissed about that. Meanwhile, we're stuck at home. No music, no shows, no nothing. Um, but hey, I got a new baby to take care of. So me and him are rocking out all the time. He loves he loves the metal. It's good stuff. So anyway, I'm going to bounce this one in here because cause I like this one. I think it's this one. Wait. Where's the... Oh, I want to do... I'm going to listen to this one. Yeah, but let's listen to... Or do I? I don't know. Okay, I'm having a hard time musically. Anybody want to throw me some opinions on their two cents? Yeah, Ben, we're really... Derrico? Derricho? Derrico? The thing that knocked the power out? A Derrico? This is like some old school clean thrash or something. What is this though? I I gotta hear this. Oh yeah, I know. Hmm. 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 Oh, here we go. Let's just play some haunted. Screw it. All right. So, what was I doing? Oh yeah, back to database stuff. All right. So the next thing. I got those two, and then we're, oh, we're building an operator table, and an operator is going to have columns. By the way, I just want to tell everybody listening right now, we're just hanging out, having a chill Friday, putting together some data modeling, and I'm kind of explaining it as I go along. I usually do a little bit more explaining, but I'm, I'm a little tired right now. It's Friday. I've only had like two cups of coffee, and... Yeah, so I'm I'm not that wired up right now, so I'm not talking as much. But up here in the screen, I am going to have basically this material covered in depth on two formats. One, I'm going to actually build, I'm going to put together a video that's a screencast that's like very, you know, it's got the call outs and arrows and all that stuff. So that's going to be pretty useful. And it's going to go through my new detail of every single little like switch and blah, blah, blah related to the Hasura migrations, okay? Um, where it won't have me fumbling around and forgetting what the commands are and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it'll be more concise and it'll probably be about, I don't know, probably, probably 30, 20, 20 to 80 minutes worth of material is what that'll be because it's going to be pretty in-depth um, and very specifically catered. And then I'm going to also start doing a bunch more data modeling content. So it's going to be a range of stuff though, right? It's not going to be uh, like just normalization of data or something like that. I'm going to be doing denormalization and talking about why you'd want to denormalize data, normalization, why you want to normalize data, how it works within a relational database, how it works in some of the other databases, NoSQL, et cetera, like Neo4j and Apache Cassandra. Um, And those things are going to be in pretty deep depth too. Also going to be talking a lot about indexing and keys within the idea of doing database model schemas. Um, So all that is going to be coming out in the next few weeks. So if you're interested in that stuff, if you're not already subscribed or follow me or whatever, which I think all of y'all are, uh, I'll be posting about it, tweeting about it, et cetera. And also, especially if any of you watching right now 
want me to put together any material specific to GraphQL or sir, graphical, how do we say this? I don't even know, it's all this, uh, pronouncing abbreviations is a losing game. You, you just can't ever do it right. Anyway, any material you want me to put together based on any of this stuff, SQL, GraphQL, Hasura, um, et cetera, any of the core bits, let me know ASAP and I will get it in the queue for sure. Um, Cause I'm putting together a lot of material right now and it is, some of it's getting close to finalized, but uh, I definitely want to put more in the queue if there's any interest for something specific because so, I'll just knock it out as I do it. All right, so ID. I really need a button that just says create Adrian's default ID that I always go to, right? Because it's always this, random UUID, blah, blah, blah. It's unique. I set that as the primary key like that. And then I make all the rest of the table. Okay, it's just good practice, generally speaking, to use these pieces like that. All right, so operator, been building this table now for about 10 minutes and running my yapper. Uh, so there's a railroad ID. I need to connect it back to that railroad ID. And this is gonna be a UUID too, uh, not nullable. And then we're gonna have a train ID. Oh, I did, you know what? All that blabbering about making an ID. And this is a scenario where I actually don't want it. And the reason is I'm gonna have a train ID and a railroad ID, right? So when I create that, I can go in here and, actually, let's see if I can do this. So if I do a primary key and I select railroad and then train ID, yes. So that's a composite key, right? So there's two pieces that are gonna make up this primary key. So the combination of the railroad ID and the train ID are always unique. So that can be indexed as the primary key, which makes the query against that when you're trying to find one to the other and doing joins across these three tables, the railroad table, the train ID, railroad table, train table, and the operator table makes them vastly faster. Um, all right, so now we wanna add the foreign keys though too. So the other bits are in the railroad. It's gonna do railroad ID to the ID. So I d should I do? Oh, interesting, composite key to a composite key. So I don't wanna do that though. I wanna add two individual foreign keys. So this one's gonna to go to trains. And so train ID goes to the ID of trains, like so, and there we go. Now, if you notice, a lot of other settings too. So we can do cascades on updates. So if something's updated in this ID, which hopefully you're not updating IDs, especially if you're using UUIDs, um, you can take an action to update that ID across the tables, et cetera. Or if one's deleted, that's something you might wanna do. Um, you wanna cascade it. So like if one's deleted here, it deletes it through the related tables. Um, but I'm actually, do I wanna do that? I don't know if I wanna do that, but yeah, cause that could, that could do things that could be frustrating. Like if I deleted a train, I don't want it to delete my railroad. So since this is a many, many table, it could cascade either way, right? And I don't wanna do that. So anyway, save that. And then I'm gonna have a details column. Just put that in, all right. Uh, that's gonna be nullable because I don't really need details, but it's just there as a just in case to describe the relationship between the railroad and the train. It could get confusing since like, you know, I was saying multiple railroads could operate a train. If that's the case, then maybe we wanna put a detail in there like, well, this railroad starts, like it starts under the BNSF, moves to the Union Pacific, and BNSF is using the Union Pacific tracks under a lend lease to ensure that it could get items with a single train from point A to point B, and thus two operators end up uh, actually running the train. All right, so that's the operator. We got train, we got consist. Okay, now we need to do Let's do train schedules, train, train schedule. Ah. Actually, yeah, I do wanna do this, this train schedules. So this is gonna be a many to many two to the table schedules, but actually let's create the schedules first because then everything will be in place that we need to actually make the many to many table. And this is back to the general primary key that I always do. All right, and then name of the schedule. 
just make that text for now. There we go, and boom. All right, now I'm gonna add another table. And we're gonna call this the train schedules. Now, let's see here. I, oh, don't, again, many to many, so let's do it right. All right, and then we have schedule ID. Whoops, there we go. Ow. Whatever I just did to my nose, I feel like I just broke it. So the primary ID would be that. And we're going to set up foreign keys. We'll do one to trains. Train ID. ID. And then let's do another one. And this one will be... By the way, is the music too loud? Let me know if you can't hear me. I don't always know if it's too loud on the stream. Um, shoot, was it a train schedule? And then schedule. Yeah, so schedules shouldn't be schedules. It should just be schedule. And that is the ID. What music? Oh, rad. Do I not have it going to the stream at all? <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, I think I know what I did. Oh, I did. Now you hear it? <laughs> God damn it. Streams. So there's the schedule. There we go. Okay. So yeah, yeah, the music. Yeah? You can hear that now, right? By the way, hey, TG Mr. P1. Do you call yourself like Tiger Mr. P1? Yes, music. <laughs> oh, I don't have my Discord hooked up. Damn it. I got to do that too. Where's my notes? Oops. Reminder. Set up Discord. I have a Discord. I just don't have it set up right now to at least post in here. Um, set up, set up, Spotify, music, bang. Blarg, there. Um, I do have, oh, hold on, I can get you, check this out. Asura Discord. Let's get you hooked up with that right now because that, is it under here? Whoops. What did, why is that? Why can't I click on things? My browser broke again. Oh, there we go. I was clicking on it. It just didn't do the thing. Yeah, go here. Go here. Go here. That's where the Hasura Discord is. So I should just hook that up. That's where I, I hang out there all the time, too. Yeah, it's your thing. Oh, movement notes over there. Okay. So we got those in and now. Oh, yeah. To, to take a look, let's go back over here and talk shop for a second. So as you can see, I'm still running linked up here. So all of my migrations are being put in, as you can also see here, uh, into these directories. And it's mostly creates, there's some alters. See, like I'm adding columns there, uh, et cetera. And the SQL is being written out, as you can see. Now in here, I don't think anything crazy is being added because I haven't really added. Oh, so there's tables. Tables are in the in the YAML. 
and this is version two. So I think in the version one, you have to add a lot of stuff in here that link directly to the migrations, but that's changed. And in V2 here, which is what I'm using, you just, you just need to do these bits, the actual migrations themselves. So now, one of the things I've noticed in the past too is if you do your migrations, you set them up initially with the user interface, which honestly is pretty easy to do compared to saying, typing out all the SQL. I've done tons of migrations right now that SQL too, but uh, it's pretty easy just to do it through the interface. However, you add SQL in here manually. Like if I go in here and say, I wanna do another create table, blah, blah, blah. The interface may not actually show it updated and it might take a minute or two for things to synchronize just right uh, when you do the migration. Cause you're gonna have to apply it again. You're gonna have to like roll them all back and then have to reapply them if you manually put them into the generated uh, migrations here. There we go, all right. So let's get back in here and let's get the rest of these tables knocked out because I got a number of them. A fairly, a fairly meaty table this one is. So let's see, we got train, railroad operator, train, uh, consist, train schedules, schedule. Oh, and for the schedule we need time points. So time, time points. Man, my casing is gonna be all over the place. It's so bad. So ID, there we go. Um, let's see here. This be, yep, gen, random, UUID, unique. Oh, that's. And then name, text. Uh, definitely don't want it to be null. <clears throat> Type. I am going to let it be able to, I'm going to leave name not unique because there's, I mean, there's a Long Beach in almost every state in this country, in the United States. There's Long Beaches in England. There's a Long Beach in frickin' France, probably. Uh, so there's a lot of redundancies of what a time point would be in the name of that time point, because a time point is basically a thing in the schedule that says, like, arrived at uh, San Francisco, departed at San Francisco at X time, and then planned arrival at next place, you know, San Jose, for instance, and then so on and so on and so on. So that's what time points are. Let's hear type and then descript, description. So text, uh, description, probably uh, arrival. And this should be time. Do I have timestamp? Yeah, I have timestamp. Sweet. Um, we'll do default to now. No, I don't want any default in that. Um, oh, but let's do this because we might be entering these in piecemeal fashion. So here we go. Yeah. History, like of the rows as they're added and deleted. Like not changes to the tables because the migrations show that, but yeah, okay. Um, oh, how would I do that? So, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a multi-approach type of thing where you have to pick. So it depends is the first answer. That's the first answer. It's the consultant answer. It's the one that's always right. It depends. First option: go to the database Postgres and set up auditing on the database itself. If you want specific history that's pertinent to what a user could see about what they have edited and such, you may want to create a table structure specific to what you want to show people via your user interface, right? And then in Hasura, oh, what is, oh, I'm not gonna navigate off this, I'll lose my table. Uh, I gotta check in the pro feature I believe there is auditing per Hasura. So like the metadata changes, et cetera, row changes, but I've got to check and see what specifically is stored because I don't want to really, I, I can't go into details on that. I just simply don't know right now. Um, got to look into that, but that's, that's interesting. What I've traditionally done 
in my own experience, has usually been to use database auditing itself and then and then spew that into something like log files or whatever. But like if you if you have data and you want people to see the changes that they've made, usually you want like a a, a different set of information shown about the data that they're changing and you'd create another table structure just specific to that. But yeah, overall, it depends. It depends on where you want to track it. It depends on which users you actually want to see it. But, and there, there are options in all tiers. I would say that, except in the application tier where you need to create it yourself. That's the biggest thing where it could be argued that that's not really an option. It's a thing that you have to do. So there's not like a, you don't turn a flag on and all of a sudden there's application auditing. You have to build something around that. So noted about that though. And I'm going to put that in my research further audit options around table data creation, edits, etc. Yeah, there we go. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, like a shadow table. Yeah, basically, you know, because like, it, it, let, let's say this table, for instance, you got time points, right? And say you have someone that manages schedules for Amtrak or for whoever, right? That, that could be one way to do it, right? Um, but even further, depending on the specifics of what you're wanting to have people see, like, let's say, like, like I was just talking about with regards to Amtrak, there's a person that goes in and sets schedules. That person manages everything there is about the schedules from uh, time point arrival, time point departure for each time point place, etc. And when they do that, um, they want to see their changes, most likely, right? I don't know what Amtrak system is actually like, but they would see or want to see, like, did they change just type? Did they change just the description? Did they change all the rows? Are each one of those things designated as a different change, right? Um, if there, there's other validation, too, that may need to be done within that audit cycle, like let's say they've changed the time and there's rules about, the the spacing of that time between time points like let's say they accidentally put something in and it's literally the next day so they've got more than 24 hours between time points there's no no single place where there should be 24 hours between two time points within the ordering of a schedule um maybe on an overall trip like from the start time point to the very ending end time point for instance the empire builder takes 46 hours to go from seattle to chicago um but in between, there's never 24 hours between two points. So if someone put that in, all of a sudden it says like, you know, gazillion thousand minutes, you want that to be flagged in the audit trail so that they can see that. Of course, that could be flagged in the uh, uh, the actual validation too. But depending on how you want the audit and what exactly you want in the audit, you might want to add those things too. So, And yeah, a shadow table that they don't particularly edit themselves, but like just keeps track of all these specific things would be ideal. And you could do it with triggers or you just write your own uh, SQL or graphical, depending on what tier you want it to, to operate at within the application itself. All right, so time points. Uh, arrival departure, I think I got all the pieces there. Whoops, not name, ID, there we go. And then we're going to add a foreign key. Or no, no, we don't. We're going to add this table. And then we're going to actually go to schedule. Wonder, can I? Oh, here we go. This is how we can do it. Let's, let's try this. Yeah, it does. It does let me change the casing. Let me, f let me make all this consistent real quick.
All right, and time points doesn't need. I think the good rule that generally is you don't pluralize the things because when the objects, when you generate objects or you do queries, et cetera, then you pluralize things based on you actually getting back multiples. Otherwise, it's just the, the table is the object that holds a train, um, which is the idea behind the naming of the table as a singular. All right, so then schedule would have, yeah, so this, and then we're going to add a time point, whoops, point ID, UUID, not nullable, because, oh, or, yeah, so schedule is not, yeah, okay, and, by the way, if you've noticed, I have train schedules, schedule, and time points. The schedule is like a minute to many between time points and train schedules. The idea is that way, train schedules, you list train schedule once, but then uh, a train schedule can have many time points and many time points in a train schedule, okay? But there's only, technically speaking, a schedule per train, okay? But the many, many table enables you to correlate them in how, whichever way you want to connect those. So there's time point ID. And I'm going to down here at foreign key. And this goes to time point. Oh, wait. No, I'm in time point. No, yeah, schedule to time point. And then time point ID. And then ID in time point. So there we go. Yeah, I made I made some made some logos with the skull. Pretty badass, huh? I am a fan of my own skull. <laughs> All right. So now for the consist here, I actually want to add some tables around that. Namely, a consist is made up of units. So we need a unit table. And we're also going to have unit types. So it could be like a passenger car. It could be a tank car that you put oil in or something, or a box car, which has random crap in it, whatever. So we're going to do unit type as a table. That'll just have a simple There we go. And then this as text. And then we're going to have a description is also text and then a unit load type um do we have a map what's our types in here so maybe json b actually to describe the characteristics of the type or just json json b You know, I might have to change it later, but right now I'm going to go with the JSON B, wherever that just went. And initially I'm going to do this. All right, set the ID. Cool. All right. And now one more table for unit. All right, this is going to have ID. And then we have unit, oops, unit ID. Um, then name. And started, um, and this is going to be like a yeah, date. So that's when the, the particular unit, so th this will be, unit is basically every single car available within a system. So when it started is literally the time when the car is made available. And I'm going to default that to now. Um, specifically because the idea would be a uh, uh, clerk, would add the unit once it's available, and that would be the started date. 
So then let's hear age. Uh, I should make this a function. I don't actually know how to do that at the moment though. But basically it needs to be um, now minus started. But updated every time you look at it. Anyway, age. Um, actually, do I need to put that in there? That should always just be a calculated date. So you look at eight, it started. And then, yeah, so this this is a, a not needed column. A view. N no, I'm not making a view. Why? What did I just say that made that the answer? I'm confused now. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like in a view, you're right, you would make a calculated column that would be the age. G good call, good call. Yep, computer. Uh, see how short my attention span is sometimes? That is so bad. All right, so now that I've just gone stupid, um, started age, which would be a computer field, then let's do mileage. That one would definitely need to be entered. I don't know if a basic integer is going to be big enough. Some of this, some, well, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate you watching and being involved helps me stay on the ball and all that shit. Um, mileage, mileage. Yeah, I guess if it's a million, what is the post Postgres integer? size. Just want to check real quick. So is that, oh, that's, okay, that's big enough. I don't think any rail cars get a billion miles. Either way, we can change it to big int one day if we need to. Right now, it's just going to be an integer, though. And we'll put nullable for the moment. No, we won't, actually. The default value is going to be zero, because if, when they enter it, it can be it can be defaulted to zero. <sighs> and then um, let's do this. Unit X. X will be the default value. Um, I wonder if I need to do... Yeah, also, if you're using ints and big ints for IDs, I think that's a deserving of a raise unto itself because uh yeah yeah i've seen companies do that and i've never seen a company not run into problems at some point it's like what's creating the big end i don't know what's creating the big end is some arbitrary application thing at least with uids they follow a standard and you're generally always going to have actually basically you're just always going to have a unique uuid so it's not really a problem, right? But with ints, like what happens if somebody writes some application code and they're just like, I'm going to put in two every time. Boom, you've just broken a whole bunch of stuff and they don't really know what the heck is going on. So, yeah. Yes, yes, big raise, big raise. Like 90%, 190% raise for ints and big ints if you use those in a database. So, yeah, yeah. I feel like I need to tweet that. Let everybody know right now mileage where was that mileage load oh yeah and this is yeah it's gonna be json b2 because there's gonna be need to be there's gonna need to be criteria around things with that so i'm gonna I'll let it be whoops i'm gonna let it be no labor so the load would be like it says type of chemical this much weight this type of criteria, blah, 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 whatever. Like, we don't know what might be in the load. We might not know what needs to be tracked. But the load would be like a bill of lading. La lading. Lading? Lading? Is that it? Yeah, I guess that's how you say it. Okay. And then there's laden. Yeah, I wrote the word right here that I'm trying to say. So, laden weight. Um, int. Oh, and if you're wondering, I'm putting this in. I actually have the, like, I wrote a data model earlier like this so i'm kind of cheating a little bit but anyway i mean i wrote that data model too i'm just copying it into the actual interface here so laden weight and then unit weight and that is uh integer two um we're gonna put this in like this whoops we're gonna make these in, uh actually now let's just default them out so they're always something 
um, laden weight, unit weight. Unit weight would be like the, the car itself, the, the unit. Tank car weighs 90,000 pounds. Then you put in 120,000 pounds of cargo, that type of thing. So the diff would be, you know, these two things. Um, and then I think, I think that's about what I need for this. So let's do a key. Uh, well, I mean, we are talking about railroad cars here. So I think the, actually, let's look that up real quick. Gross truck weight USA. Gross uh, train car weight USA. Oh, they go over 33, right? Yeah, gross vehicle weight rating. Oh, that's a good one to pick because that is the example that's actually on the site. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Well, if you if you like React, that is. Let's see, React to do, I think is, is this it? Yeah, it's like a little, it's a, it's a micro course, I'll call it. Uh, it's just a, it's a short course, I should say. But, uh, React Native, uh, why do I need this? To... Is this the one? I think this is the one. Is it, is it, is it? Well, phooey. One day I'll get to it. Yeah, so insert two dos, et cetera. And then you can subscribe to them, et cetera. Yeah, so here I'm gonna put this in the in the thing. Boom. To do app mini course. There you go. So yeah, check that out. That's that's pretty useful. I, I think I might actually work through that in the coming weeks on stream. So I'll probably do a video of the whole course. Uh, and I'm also teaching a course, that and some other things, at the upcoming React Summit next this coming week, this next week. So here it says gross vehicle weight, 26,000 pounds. I thought our 18-wheelers were like 80,000 80, pounds. Heavy-duty vehicle? Large goods, yeah, large goods vehicle. Let's look at that, large goods vehicle. This is, oh yeah, so 20, 26 to 30,000 pounds, I guess. Sub 30,000 pounds? Yeah, wow, okay, I didn't. Yeah, so speaking of that, <laughs> railroads are not messing around. <laughs> That's... I didn't realize there was that much of a disparity. Um, but yeah. So yeah, railroads railroads can ship heavy, heavy, heavy weight. Like these cars right here, probably 190,000 pounds or something. The grain car, this is, this is just lumber, and that's a grain car. Um, so yeah, I could have sworn these were at least like 80,000 pounds. I can see why they ship commodities via rail then. Holy crap. Only 30,000 pounds per truck. That'd be that'd be painful shipping bulk lumber that way over long distances when you're competing against, say, a railroad, which can do it for, like, probably a third or a fifth the price. Yeah, anyway. Like 200,000 something. <laughs> Transcontinental. Yeah. Oh. Uh, da, da, da. So did I add the table? I didn't add it, did I? Oh, okay. Oh, I need to add. I did add the unique key, so I think it's all. I think it is all in there. Cool. Okay. So let's use the interface and actually add some stuff. So let's insert a row. In this case, we're gonna do Union Pacific Railroad. Whoops, 
railroad. And then let's do sound transit just to look at uh, railroad. Oh, this is going to be hard to do because their website is like crack. How to import Excel. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, I got to say, this trying to find... Okay, we're not doing this. Let's do Los Angeles commuter rail. Or maybe we should just do Amtrak. That might be easier. Metrolink. Oh, no, we can do Metrolink. So there's UP. So Union Pacific, let's do that one first. Union Pacific, it's one of the largest railroads in the United States, in the world really, for that matter. Um, history, about us, inside track, history and photos. Uh, oh cool, it shows the fallen flag railroads. I just I just wanted a page. Oh, I know what. Yeah, okay. Out of there. So let's see how the interface handles this. Is that enough in the Western United States? It seems to have gotten it all in there. I, I called it history, right? Yeah, so let's actually, that's about, let's see this. The original company, 1862. There we go. Okay, and then HQ City was, what is it? It's uh, dates, locale. It's in Nebraska, yeah. Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. Surface area. Let's say Western United. But that's really not it. There's more to it, I bet. Right? Oh, it is just the Western United States. I think some of these, I thought some of these went into Canada or Mexico. But I guess that's it. So let's. Copy this image address, put in the map link. We're going to actually say Western United States. One row affected. Let's look at the browse of that. There's my ID, my name. There we go. Got the whole, the whole cookie. And there's the link. All right. So let's get another one. Do a John Gauntline. John Gauntline doesn't exist. I'm, I'm doing... Uh, Built your interstate highways. Did the, the the British didn't do anything in that regard? Yeah, all that stuff was done post British rule. Um, we we did our highways in multi phases. There were state highways, which were basically partially public funded, partially private funded. Initially, some of them were toll roads that were completely private, and then those were eventually nationalized through state-run entities. Um, there should be a word like statized, um, public, public eyes, socialized, whatever, something like that. So that was the state stuff, and then that was it for basically the United States until about 1958, 1958. I think around then, 1960, 1958, 1952, something like that. Anyway, the interstate highway system was built, public funds entirely, uh, and that was funded almost entirely through gas tax at the federal government level, mostly. 
they did some split funding with the states because the gas tax didn't cover it all. Um, and then that was set up to do a trust fund. And then those were the main highways. British didn't do anything with that in regard to that. And the Army did not build the interstate highways. It was contracted out almost entirely. Uh, some of the Army Corps of Engineers did some of the initial an assessments. And like Dwight D. Eisenhower and a crew did some in the tweens and tens and thirties leading up to war two, unrelated to war two, just trying to get like military equipment from one side of the country to the other, which was difficult if you're trying to use a regular road, um, which is one of the reasons why the United States did so well moving equipment back and forth because they didn't use roads. They used the railroads. The railroads were all built by private enterprise and doing some split funding for the Western roads, but all the initial ones were all private enterprise stuff. But anyway, I digress. Uh, so Union Pacific, right? Union Pacific in there. I'm just adding real railroads right now. So that's the other thing I was going to say real quick. And then let's, let's add Metrolink. Wikipedia Metrolink. I've studied too much of this stuff. Spent so much of my life doing this. Oh, look, there's a Manchester Metrolink, too. I'm going to look at that. Oh, it's a little cutesy system. That's cool. Manchester. So, okay, this is the Metrolink California routes history. There we go. That started in, yeah, 71 during Amtrak's thing. Um, all right, so let's put in history. Put in Metrolink. Whoops. Metrolink Los Angeles. The crap. Yeah, okay. Angeles commuter rail. Yeah, I'm going to leave that in there. Then HQ City would be obviously Los Angeles, California. Service area, Los Angeles. And uh, actually, metro area. That would be it. Okay, and then. Would that be a map? That railroad has had a lot of wrecks from people in cars, jackasses. Uh, and they ran a train into a train once. That was one of the most horrifying ones ever. I think that was the, the Oxnard one. Or Chatsworth. Oh, Chatsworth. That was the bad one where they ran two trains into each other. Because the train driver was texting. That was during that phase of time. See you later, Bible Clan member. I'm going to start calling you VCM. See you later, VCM. Anyway, so let's do this. All right, so Metrolink is in there now. Oh, I need a URI in there, so let's do that. Let's get railroad, yeah, modify. Let's add a column, uh, Wikipedia, URI. And then uh, URI. This would be unique. And this would be unique. It indexes it a certain way, which is one of the reasons why I'm going ahead and setting this as unique, because they will definitely be unique. Let's 
do edit on this one. Wikipedia URL. So this is Union Pacific Railroad. And then the company is that one. So let's save that. And then browse rows. Let's do Metrolink. Metrolink and then, whoops. All right. Oh, I guess I need to put in, oh, St. Louis has one too, that's right. Oh, I didn't get that in there. Loss, Los Angeles metro area. Okay, it saved at that time. I thought I typed that in last time, but I suppose I did not. Um, all right, so next thing's next. So we got two in there. All right, so hmm. let's go check out our migrations here. Look at all that, that's awesome. So I'm gonna close that and stop this. Oh, there's our other migrations. Okay, so then let's do Hasura, migrate, oops, migrate, apply. Um, Okay, and then apply, whoops, apply. Oh, phooey. I did this 20 minutes ago and I've already forgotten what it is. What is the, the backwards thing? It is, oh, down, down, that's what it's down. And then all, yep. Cool. And get status, all right, get add. Adding full migrations. Now, uh, okay, let's do this. Sura console, I'm gonna go back into it real quick. Now I'm curious, cause I, I rolled the migration up and rolled the migration back. So the question is, um, let's go into logistics, railroad, Oh, no rows found. So I just deleted all that shit I just added. Ah, dad burn it. Um, uh, so I wonder what a good way to... Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so do that. And... Terraform, stream notes, okay. Um, so I'm in a database here. What? Oh. Okay, there we go. And then railroad. So I wonder if I can do a
Peerless view, view, foreign key, table. I don't want to do a table. Mm, I just want to do an insert. Oh, I guess I'll do this then. Insert into, whoops, into uh, logistics. Let's dot railroad these things, the columns, values, this stuff. Okay. So let's do this and this. Set that in command on there. So this is going to be all of them. Pacific. So the URI would be here. And then the Wikipedia URI. And map link. Then service area, Western. United States, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, then history. I'm going to skip that for now. Union Pacific. Oh, we don't actually need that because we have that function in that column in the database. Let's do this. Let's create a table here. Um, what should we call it? Data. Manual. First uh, baseline data SQL. Here, can I run it on? Uh, what? No, I want to run it against. That's weird. Anyway, I'm going to run it here. There we go. Okay. Strategic pause. Thank you for following and joining me in the mosh pit of code. Oh, and that reminds me. Where's my notes of stuff to do? I don't know where my code window is. I need to fix the font size and such in that message because it hangs off the bottom, drives me nuts. 
I don't know where, oh, it's way over on the other screen. Fix the follower button. How goes it in your part of the universe, your world, your place, your home, your place of work, wherever you are? Strategic pause, and yes, indeed. Mm. Metal water bottle. I just hit my tooth. Now my whole skull feels broken. Let's see here. Let's flick that on real quick. The fallout. I don't like that one, but let's do... Yeah, we're going to go with that one for now. Hanging out on Vashon. Oh, got to drop for a video chat already. Well, that's that's kind of cool, though, you know. Do you live on Vashon, or are you just hanging out there? I mean, only like four people live on Vashon Island, right? <laughs> oh. Delaware, I think. Delaware is the headquarters of Amtrak. Oh, compared to what we used to have in this country, it's such a sad little network. Oh, that is badass. Where did that... What? The Congressional Pennsylvania Railroad. Yeah. Oh, what a badass train. Where did I just copy? Oh, yeah, the image. Canada and Mexico. No, wait. Nope, just Canada. I wish it served Mexico. That'd be super red. That is the coolest picture. Where? What is that on here? Oh, right here. That's gorgeous, too, in it. Yep. Frick. This is a spotty one. Yep. All the different colors of the railroad that join together. Jack London Square. Huh. Anyway. Um, what else we got to add? We got to add... Oh, HQ City. That's what I meant. Oh, and Washington, D.C. Okay. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. No, nope. okay, I got it. Why does it always... Oh. Yeah, have a good one. Cheers, strategic pause. Okay. Hey, we know our uh, 
data integrity is working. So here we go. That worked. Okay. Oh, I should have closed that. Yeah. The same thing again. All right, so let's get that added. All right, just one of us, we're down to one person. I guess we won't write anybody then. It's been a good stream, got a lot done. We'll have a lot more done in the subsequent future. Um, so the question is though, do we even fake raid anybody with like one person? Chris maybe? LA phase, risotto. I, I would like some risotto. Yeah, I think we're just going to skip that. So on that note, everyone who is watching, has watched, will be watching Cheerio. It's outro time. Y'all have a good one. Hope the weekend treats you badass and keep thrashing code.